Hello, my name's Fraser and I'm with Lonesome Dog Studios and today we're going to be looking at some heavy bass guitar processing. Okay, so first off, let's check out what the raw tones are we're dealing with here. So firstly, we have a clean bass DI. And then we have a print from a dark glass. It's quite fizzy, got loads of distortion in it. And then we have another print from a from the Parallax plugin, which is doing a similar thing, but not quite as trebly. It's adding loads of like hair in the upper mids. Cool, so those are the three raw tones. So step one, we wanna go through and gently EQ and manage these three raw tones. So firstly, we're gonna look at the DI'd bass. And on this, we've got a low pass at around 200 Hertz. Now the reason we're doing this is because the, the reason we have the bass DI, the clean DI, is to get that clean low end and the clean sub, and we can use that and control that to add the weight to the bass guitar. So that turns this trebly DI signal into just some low end, which we can mix in at our leisure. So then the processing for the dark glass track, we just have a high pass and that's quite a gentle 6 dB per octave slope, starting at around 350 hertz, cutting out that common problem area of two to 400 hertz in a bass guitar, especially in a sort of a metal mix, you wanna scoop it out a little bit more. So that sounds like this. Pulls out all the low and pulls out all the weight. And that just means it's, it's one part of a bigger picture now. We've done a similar process with the parallax print over here, but it got a little bit more extreme. So I kept the high pass, I kept it a little bit tighter because I wanted a bit of that low end in here. But then we've got a big dip at around 330 hertz, pulling a load of mud out. And then we've got one little resonance pulled out here at 3.3k as well. One thing to note is that I've enjoyed using this stock EQ because there's no analyzer. So I find it pushes you to use your ears more than your eyes a little bit, which is something I've definitely been guilty of before. Okay, so step two now is we've routed the three tracks to a aux channel here. So we have one fader controlling all three of these tracks. And then the first bit, bit of processing we're gonna do to all three of them is some maintenance. We're gonna take some low and high end off of it just to tighten up the tone. So we've got a uh, high pass at 80 Hertz, and then we've got a low pass at 4.8. Now this low pass is quite important because without it, you leave in a load of fizzy high-end information that I don't think you need, need in the bass in the mix. So we can check that out here. This is without, I'll just solo them up. Pulls a load of fizz out the top of it, which gets in the way of the vocals, lead guitars, and even the guitars. Okay, so step three, we have a little, a little bit of additive EQ. Firstly, we're just making sure that we get rid of the uh, sub rumble with a high pass of 40 hertz here. And then we have a monster boost, 3.2K, 8.5 dB, quite a wide Q as well, so it's pulling up a lot of high-end information, and that is to get the bass to poke through a little bit more. So what we've done is we've cleared out some of the harshness and fizziness right at the top end with the EQ before, and now we're just adding in some, some more desirable presence with this one here. So this is what it sounds like without it. And 
and then with sounds very drastic but if you drop that into the context of the mix it just helps the bass poke out so much it's invaluable so this is in the mix without and then with just adding that attack and the treble and getting it to cut through a little bit more so you can actually actually hear it hear the detail of it okay so the next step we've got some saturation and then some compression now this compression isn't too extreme at all the mix is just above we're at 63 percent on the mix the lowest ratio on the 1176 and then we're hitting it, the needle's moving quite a lot, but it's not doing a load of work. It's tightening it up and leveling it out a little bit, but we're not going too crazy with it. Just tightening it up but notably we are losing a lot of the low end so that brings me on to the next and final step of this process so the last step is some multi-band compress compression and we're targeting the low end that we left in with the clean base di and what we're going to do is we're going to isolate that under 187 hertz and we're going quite significant with the compression it gets around minus 10 at points and with a very fast attack to minimize the dynamics of the low end and a medium release and my favorite part about this process is that because we're using the compressor in a multi-band format we can control the gain of that part of the sound and mix in how much low end we want with the bass guitar independently so it offers you a lot of control here as well so this is the bass guitar soloed without the multi-band compression And then with obviously that's extreme and it's huge and there's low to low end and it sounds pretty crazy in solo but then if we bring it all back into the mix and then dial in how much low end we want with the gain knob here we can get it sounding pretty sweet So there were just a few pretty simple steps to control your bass tone and get it sitting in the mix. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and I'll see you next time. Thank you.